This is Anthony from Adelaide, South Australia. He's angry that he's a musical failure, so he's traveled to see me, Matt Farley, in Danvers, Mass. I'll teach him to earn money and to be an artist of the middle class. This is... <laughs> I can see the synopsis. Failed musician learns nothing from an idiot in America. I would watch that, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's two months out from my 28th birthday and I'm still doing my weekly chores at home in my parents' house. I realized if I don't make a change now, I may never leave here, or worse. I might have to get a job outside of the arts. My name's Anthony Frith and all I want is to earn a living doing something I enjoy. So far, I've tried filmmaking, comedy, and music. And if any of those are taken off, then I wouldn't now be trying to host a documentary. I'm determined to find a way to make money from art. So that's what I googled, and I found a guy who makes a middle class wage by uploading novelty songs to Spotify. Of all my artistic attempts, music was the one I had the most, very limited success in. I was actually part of a band that performed gigs, sold t-shirts, and released music online. We broke up because all of our hard work never paid off. So how has this guy managed to make a living from only releasing music online? I want to know his secret to success, to see if I too could make a living from music this way. And a week later, I was on my way to the US to meet him. Working hard, I'm tired, but I will not do to spend any extra time away from you. So I'm hoping on a red eye play. I guess I'm sleeping in the sky. I've come all the way to Danvers, Massachusetts. Home of Matt Farley, the man who's going to teach me how to become a novelty songwriting middle class artist. The amount of time you spend on a song does not always uh, reflect how good or bad it is. Yeah, it so, goes around two more times, yeah. but you get the point. Yeah. So that's basically your bat out of hell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I bet you if I just called it the poop song, people will look for it. We're getting very close to 500,000 streams on Spotify. How much money is that? $2,500 for one song. For one song <laughs> that took me as long as it is to write it. Poop! Every time someone listens to one of Matt's songs on Spotify, he gets half an American penny. Most of his tracks are nowhere near as popular as the Poop song. But with his model for success, they don't need to be. So that's cool. In 2004, I started releasing music with my band Moe's Haven. Shut Up Your Monkey, I Love Hugh Grant and Frozen Pizza was earning $2 a year. And I was like, wait a second, $2 per song per year, if you have 10,000 songs, boom, that's 20 grand. Uh, how many songs have you written? I've written 18,800, just about right now. I'm really excited to get to 19,000. If I can have a middle-class life by just making songs, ah, that's the greatest. Place. It's the capital city of Southern Australia. Now, was I right to call it Southern Australia or should it have been South Australia? Just South. Ah, uh, little error. error. You've just lost all credibility. Oh, no. What? How could I do that? Was Wikipedia wrong? Oh, Southern Australia. Back when I was in a band, we spent years agonizing over about 15 songs. In the same amount of time, Matt has written, recorded, and released thousands. So the challenge for me is to see if I can totally change my way of making music. The best songs in, in my catalog are the best songs ever written. And the rest of them, pretty darn good. Okay? Okay, there's a third tier. Real bad. <laughs> Uh, 
right. <laughs> Sometimes, just the first song of the day, let me just write it, you know? Get it's it just out. like kind of, you know, it's like doing a warm up run, except that you're going to release it to the <laughs> entire world. <laughs> Everybody has a butt. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody has a butt. Oh. You know, it's a decision. Do I bother to do three tracks of has a butt or not, you know? And I think it was worth it, though. I'm sure you feel very proud because you have a butt. So now that's my 321st album. There's 49 tracks on it. I could have done 50. Look at all these congratulation things I didn't end up recording. Congratulations on your dance recital, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Great job on your debate. <laughs> I'm looking at a list, I'm like, is it worth the two minutes <laughs> to record this song? And the answer was no. Matt releases everything he makes, good or bad. Whereas, I'm not sure I could handle people listening to my music and thinking, this stinks. Why not just release the good stuff? I currently use 72 different names to release music. And the more words I have on my album title, my artist name, and my song title, the more apt I'm going to get a lucky hit on searches. And then, ping! I've earned half a penny. <laughs> if I only released my very best songs, no one would listen to any of them. Having all those quote unquote bad songs is in a way an advertisement for the, the good songs because it's a way to get noticed. Look, who's to say what good music is? That's what I want to know. <laughs> the general public, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen to the highlighter song from the Office Supply album. So good. Sometimes when I am reading something, I will come across a part that I will want to remember for the future. Whatever. When I was 18, I dreamt of headlining nationwide tours but now I'll settle for writing super specific songs about things around me. I just have to learn how. So with Matt as my mentor, I've hired a house nearby to use as my recording studio. My challenge is to record 100 novelty songs over the next 10 days. They can't be terrible, but I can't spend too long on them either. And if I succeed, then I'll know that I can do this for the rest of my life. Over the text, you still see the text, especially if the text is written in black or blue or some other dark color. That is the point of the highlighter. You get to highlight the part of the text that you want to remember. Uh huh, I love my highlighter.